Well, everybody knows everything's better and better. My kids can play anywhere they want in town. They can ride their bikes, and I am not worried about what's going on, what's going to happen to them. I don't know. It was just when I drove into this town, I said, oh, my God, this is it. This is where I want to be. And here I am. <laughs> what we're hearing is that potentially by 2040, we will triple in population. I'm the barn owner here at Kelly Farms in Matter, Georgia, and we teach English and Western riding. We also do birthday parties, summer camp, and we compete in horse shows as well. Yeah, brother. And are our feet in the stirrups, or are they clunking around down the side of his belly? <laughs> Inside the stirrups, very good. So all of this is very new to him. It's, there's just this connection with horses and humans. It's really hard to explain, but it's just the bond that you create with the animal and you know, they'll never let you down and they can never break your heart, but you can tell them all your secrets and they can't tell anybody else. <laughs> we were originally from Colorado and we actually just looked it up online and just looked for farms in the state of Georgia. And we traveled all over the state of Georgia trying to find kind of the best of both worlds for me to train horses and to teach kids how to ride and for my husband to, to raise red and black Angus cows. The weather is ideal. Uh, it, I mean, it does get hot here in the summertime, but we don't have snow too much. <laughs> there's, there's a couple of years where it pretended to snow, but the weather's pretty moderate and um, the grass grows for quite a long time compared to Colorado where we had about three or four months of actual growing season. So we stumbled across this little place in Metter and absolutely fell in love with it. Fell in love with the location, the people, the atmosphere, the weather. I mean, everything, we absolutely love everything about this town. Just the people alone. They'll stop and ask you how you're doing and they actually care. They'll hold the door open for you, say please and thank you. Out in Colorado, it was kind of every man for himself. And so this is the feel, this is how we want to raise our kids and, um, and just, it's just a better way of living. I've lived in Monterey, California, and Highlands, North Carolina, and uh, I must say that the people here are the friendliest. 
Uh, people are amazed at the, the uh, beauty of the garden, uh, the well-managed uh, care of the garden. Uh, they are astounded, really, and we have people that come from all over. They stop here to eat, they hear of the garden, and they come and they spend hours here. About 40 years ago, Michael had been recording his TV programs in the studio. And he said, you know, our theme is about a seed in a garden. So why not go outside and begin recording the seeds in a garden? Here's the sower, Michael Guido of Meta, Georgia, with a seed for the garden of your heart. Every setback is a step to success. Nothing comes out right the first time. Ford built his first car without a reverse gear. He went bankrupt twice in his first three years. The Coca-Cola company sold only 400 Cokes during their first year in business. Well, we're with the, uh, some satellite systems now that penetrate every nation, as far as we know. And uh, probably every country, in one way or another, has access to the broadcasts. When it's exam time at Southern, we get all these little prayer requests. Help me with calculus, Lord. <laughs> it is. Uh, we, we probably get 10 or 12 prayer requests a day. Our chapel is probably 35 years old. It's never been locked. It's open night and day. We have people in there. They leave us little notes telling us how important the garden is to them. Uh, it's just a very unique place. It's something that's not commercialized. It's something that's just here for people. When they want to be quiet, when they want to be alone, when they want to meditate, when they want to read, we're here for them. Very often we have people spend the night here who have no place to go. And you can see from the condition that they do no damage. A little theme we talk about, everything's better and better. And uh, we like to be part of the better and better. slogan's true. You go all across the U.S. and people have heard of Metro Georgia because we're the best stop in the middle of Georgia. If you're coming from Atlanta to Savannah, everybody says we're the best stop. And not just for travelers and for visitors coming to shop here, but it's a down-home feeling. A lot of us, especially people in my generation, my age, have moved here because of the school system. We have one of the number one school systems around. So just eight years ago, our graduation rate was only 56%, and now it's 88.2. We have a major industrial park that's less than a quarter of a mile off of I-16. We have an airport that's elongated that could take corporate jets here. And so with the widening and the deepening of the Savannah River for the ships coming in, we've gotten three international businesses to land home here in Metter. The cost of living, is so much lower here than it is for a bigger city. Raising a family here couldn't be much safer and much better. We farm peanuts and cotton, about 2,000 acres. I went to college to do something else and I was kind of drawn back to the farm. My family's always farmed. Um, my brother farms with me. We farm with my, with my dad and uh, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty simple life. We have some good, really good farmland. Uh, we have good infrastructure for agriculture and matter. We have a peanut buying point. We have a couple of cotton gins. We have several fertilizer and seed dealerships, and so we're sort of set up for agriculture. Uh, it, it is the largest industry in our county. All right, these peanuts, the field we're in here, the peanuts have been turned up, inverted. Uh, they're, they're turned up so the peanuts themselves can dry. When, uh, when they're still in the ground green and growing, they completely cover the field like carpet. It's about a foot deep of just green stems and vine. And you have to invert them and get them turned up. Shake, it shakes the dirt out of them and gets the peanuts turned up so they'll dry. 
and uh, they have to be dry so you can separate them from the vine. Uh, the peanuts move travel into this, into here, into there. There are hundreds of spring teeth, fingers, sort of like this, spinning real fast, and it thrashes those peanut vines into small, into small pieces, thrashes all the peanuts off. All right, these peanuts have been harvested and they'll ride in these trailers to the buying point where they'll be marketed to candy companies or peanut butter companies. I will tell you that uh, Georgia's peanut rich because of the soil. It's a, it's a different type of soil. Uh, in our climate, we have a perfect growing season for peanuts. We have enough cold weather in the winter to uh, have an insect kill and a weed kill, and then we have a long growing season which peanuts need. Uh, fresh vegetables, though, are, are beginning to become popular in Georgia uh, for farmers. We do have a long growing season, and it's, it's, it makes growing vegetables a viable crop option for us. You don't realize how hard it is to, for that fresh food to get to a store. You know, we're in the south and we can grow food nearly year round. In parts of Georgia, we can grow food, fresh produce almost year round. But in the north, you can't grow food when it's cold. And the process of getting fresh vegetables from California to New York it's, it's a task and you know people just don't understand how big of a task it is. I think if they got a better idea of what it took to grow a, a ear of fresh corn or a, a squash for example and what it costs to grow a squash uh, that they would appreciate where their food comes from. It's the best place to be. This is much better than sitting behind a desk. I like being on a tractor, I like being by myself. You don't, you don't have to hear from anybody when you're out here. I can leave my phone in the truck and I really don't hear from anybody. Oh, well now, I like it here. We have to take special care of it, farming, you know, hilly land, but I like it. Uh, we have forest, pine forest, oak ridge forest, and uh, it's real pretty. You could ride around and we, it's a pretty place. Well, I love living in Metter. Uh, I like small town. Uh, I know most everybody in town. Uh, my wife teaches school in, at the local elementary school and she has taught so many kids. And we have uh, classes, first grade classes, kindergarten classes. She brings them out and we see what happens on the farm. And I see those kids when they graduate from high school and they remember who I am. And it just feels good to, to know people and to, to walk in the grocery store or the pharmacy and know who you see when you're in there. I just, I like the small town. I've got 15 different vendors and anything that comes in this door, if it needs to be worked on or refurbished or tightened up or the seats put in, I do. And I'm all over the place, so just stay with me. But this is an old rocker. When it came in, it was all brittle and everything and it didn't have a bottom on it. So I took some twine I had and I wove the bottom and then I put a uh, polyurethane on it and that gives it its support and so now all you have to do is put a bottom on it and it makes it beautiful and it's all original so I just love old things and I love bringing them back to life that's just a joy for me and this piece I'm going to show you this piece right here do you know what it is Margaret you know what it is it's a washer Mm-hmm. So what they did, they put the water at the bottom, they put their clothes in here, and that's how the women stayed in good shape back in the day. 
And see, this right here is what how agitates the clothes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you've got your ringers right here your clothes went through. I lost my arm about, I see, in 03, so that's been about 13 years ago. And when I was laying on the bed, because I used to be a machinist, when I was laying there, I asked God, please help me find something that I can do to support myself. So he led me to Matter, Georgia. And I was here a year, and I walked into this business, and God has blessed me. He has blessed me with the people. He's blessed me with this town. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be here. And if anybody wants to visit Matter, Georgia, this is the place to be. Hi there. Hi. Oh my goodness. Can I help you, hon? Oh, we were just looking. Hi there. How are you? How are you, princess? How are you, princess? I'm not alone. That's the way I look at it. Come in. Come in. I will too. Okay. Here we go. What are we going to do now? I do what I love and love what I do. So anyway, that's it. <laughs>well, this is one of those kind of off the beaten path types of places. We're not too far from Savannah and you know, 16 is a pretty boring road, but we're a pretty quick diversion off of 16. And it's a beautiful place. It's kind of one of those hidden gem types of places that you don't hear too much about, but then people come here and they just get all excited by what they see and they want to come back and they plan their, their next vacation or, or, or daycation out here at the park. This park was founded in the early 70s it was named after a speaker of the house back in the 1960s. The park itself consists of over 1,634 acres, 412 acres of which is the Watson Mill Pond here. One of the biggest attractions of the park here is, is the 412 acre lake because it's one of the few areas locally that has this kind of uh, cypress tree coverage. Kayaking out here, we have uh, 10 miles of kayak trails, or, or any kind of boating trails. Um, there are ospreys that nest here in the springtime. There is a rookery way back on the far end of the lake. In the spring and summer, you're likely to see small to medium-sized alligators. There is one out there that's about 10 to 11 feet long. It's very calm, still water, which makes for easy paddling, a nice lazy day on the lake, and it is a big uh, fishing attraction as well. I was told when I first went into the newspaper business that uh, your family will probably have to hire your pallbearers because sometime during your career, you're gonna make everybody mad. As far as we know, we're the only newspaper ever owned by a municipality. Um, about 1910, um, people in Metter, they decided they wanted a county. And what they did was the city of Metter hired an editor and started a newspaper. They called it the Metter Advertiser, not to give the retail merchants a place to advertise their products, but to advertise Metter to the county legislature. As the story goes, Governor Candler's widow said, I'll help you get this passed if you'll name your county after my husband. So therefore, it did pass. That's why we are Candler County. It's, it's getting harder. Um, the recession was extremely hard on us and, uh, and a lot of small papers. Um, and then the recession's kind of ending, but you got Facebook. Um, I have people all the time tell me, well, I don't get take paper anymore. I rely on Facebook. And I say, listen, that's not news, <laughs> that, you know. I'm James Marion Jones, and uh, I've been here for the 87 years, except for time in service. Metal was formed around the Central Georgia Depot. And the trains came through, and they decided to form a town here, and names were suggested, and the name suggested was Meta, 
M-E-A-D-O-W. But in Washington, like everything else, they got messed up. They came back better, M-E-T-T-E-R. But back in the uh, 20s, the main, main highway from San, San Diego to Savannah, Georgia, was known as the Dixie Overland Highway, and it came through Metter, Georgia. And uh, we had a garage here on the Dixie Overland Garage, had two or three service stations, and uh, the main thing they did back in those years was patch Model A Ford tires and change the oil, that's all they did. But now, we don't know our neighbors anymore. People moved in here because uh, things are so much better in Metter than they are in the big cities, so they come to Metter, and like uh, our son-in-law, he lives here but works at Gulfstream in Savannah. A next door neighbor lives here but works at Gulfstream in Savannah. A man across the street lives here. He works at Georgia Ports Authority. So, so many people, uh, it's only one hour from here to Savannah. So, a lot of our people work in states were in Savannah. And going through other towns in North Georgia, Saturday was a big day, but here, it's just everything's over Saturday. In fact, if we have a fire on Saturday, we put it out on Monday morning. It's pretty laid back. It's a laid back community, and we love it. I was thinking about my first date. When I was in the fourth grade, the Dixie Theater downtown, it cost 10 cents to go. And so I invited Colleen Pittman to go to the picture show with me. And somebody asked, why is a picture show? It's the same as a movie or a theater, for those who don't know. But anyway, my daddy gave me a quarter, and that was 10 cents each to get in, and then uh, a nickel for popcorn. And she wanted to eat too much popcorn, so we separated. So when it was over, I went my way, she went her way. That, that ended that courtship. This is just some fresh local produce that's, that's grown in, uh, here around Metter. Uh, we've got a network of, of growers that, that grow and, and sell us their produce, and we, we put it out for sale each day here at the Metter Farmer's Market. This is some local grown tomatoes coming from uh, a grower right outside of Collins, Driggers Farms. This will be some fresh shelled zipper peas that we, we picked and shelled, uh, shelled this morning. We offer those each day for sale. Fresh, fresh local scupper nogs from Sturgis's Vineyard right outside of Metter. Well, you, you've heard the slogan, everything's better in Metter. The produce, produce is definitely better in Metter. I love to take a bagel, slice it, toast it, put mayonnaise on it, good slice of peeled tomato, or maybe two slices of peeled tomato, salt and pepper, and eat that thing, and boy, I tell you, it's so good it'll make you slap your grandpappy. <laughs> we feel like we've got an incredible community in which to live. Uh, quality of life is just great. Um, wonderful schools, um, have medical care. Anybody that plays golf, we've got one of the finest 18 hole courses you'll find anywhere. Our golf pro, uh, Greg Wolf, is in the Georgia Hall of Fame, and he uh, loves to give lessons. Well, the amenities we don't have are within an hour to Savannah, two hours to, uh, an hour and a half to Augusta, Macon, and less than three hours here in Atlanta. So we're, we feel like we've got everything that people would want within easy reach. Well, we have a number of people that work here and drive to Savannah. Uh, I remember one couple from Savannah a number of years back moved here, still worked in Savannah, but they lived on the other side. They said they could drive from Metter to Savannah just as quickly and much less stressful than uh, living in Savannah and have the quality of life that they enjoy here. We just built a new pre-K through eight I think it was like 30, well over 30 million dollars. It is truly state of the art. We have kids in there playing with robots. They have the uh, 
iPad tables. So the, the schools, yes, will uh, entice others to come here. Georgia is growing by leaps and bounds population-wise. The uh, coast, everybody wants to go to the coast. And so when it fills up, it's going to come back this way. Thank you.